Hello everybody. This is 10 more things that serious pianists can do, maybe not every day, but often, with the goal of developing our musicianship. Uh, I came to realize that there's no way that a teacher or a school can really show me everything that I need to know, that I need to be very active teaching myself. And I realized after serving on faculty for a number of years that the stuff I was using every day, the knowledge I was using every day, either for my own playing or for teaching, the vast majority of it I found out myself, built upon the foundation that my teachers gave me, but after building that foundation, you know, you, you keep going and you learn things on your own, and those are the things that really, really help you. So these are things you can do to build your own musicianship. First of all, number one, the composers you are playing, go find non-piano pieces by the same people. So if you are playing Mozart sonatas, go listen to Mozart concertos or go listen to the Mozart Requiem. Uh, I've put a list down in the description of you know equivalencies, sample equivalencies for this uh, task. And the reason for this is because I, I, I believe that many composers use the piano as a kind of sketchbook for larger forces of choir or orchestra or chamber music. And you kind of, when, you know, when you write for orchestra, you have unlimited possibilities. You have 60 or 80 people and as many layers and as many timbres as you want. You're not limited by two hands and one person. And so you can really go crazy and write what you want. And so I think when we listen to choral and orchestral music, we are really hearing the full idea of what that composer was thinking. And often, when you come back to the piano and you hear certain patterns, you realize, oh, that's meant to represent something in the orchestra. For example, in Mozart, uh, these right hand, those are string tremolos. Okay, very, very clearly. Number two, transpose short bits from your pieces. We've been talking about the Schubert A-flat impromptu. So what if instead of playing it in A, I played it in F? Suddenly, I can't depend on remembering to push that black button or that white button. I have to think in terms of scale degree and harmony, and it forces my thinking into a more sophisticated level you will learn a tremendous amount about harmony and voice leading if you just transpose. Number three, copy music by hand. This is slow and, and painstaking, but you get two things from it. One, you, you learn about how notation really works when you do it yourself. You really don't know how notation works if you've, all you've ever done is read it. But if you have to create it yourself, you get new insights into it. Secondly, when you copy something out by hand, you are forced into slow, sustained attention to all these details, and you will remember a lot about that piece. Number four, transcribe something by ear. A short piece, maybe a, a simple texture, or maybe a section of a piece, you know, maybe Scarlatti or something. Just make yourself do the exercise of figuring out what it is without the help of the score. Excellent training for your ear. Number five, my teacher would say, on every page, every day, you can find something that you hadn't noticed before. And, and I thought, there's no possible way that's true. And I went and looked at everything I was working on. And sure enough, every day, I found little details that I had not noticed before. On every page, every day, you can find something. Number six, write out a progression from one of your pieces and improvise or compose over it. Okay, so what we could do if we went back to the Bach B-flat prelude, so I could take those same chords and just do something simple with them, maybe add a note to the figuration. Or do something in another style like Mozart. Something like that. Um, 
again, it forces you to think about how those harmonies really work. Number seven, discover an unknown composer. You know, we have our favorites, you know, Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, and so on. But when you, when you think about that time period, you know, the so-called classical period, every city of any size had at least one highly, highly trained musician. So there are hundreds and thousands of these people who left tons of music that's very interesting. <clears throat> you can find something to play that nobody else plays, and that's very cool to present something to the world that has not been heard for hundreds of years. So again, down in the description, I've just added some names of some people that I've come across that I thought were really cool and interesting that you can check out. Number eight, call BS on fingerings and motions that are not working. We all know that we have places in our pieces where every time we get there, we, we dread a little bit and we sort of grit our teeth and close our eyes and hope we'll get through it. It's time to call BS on that section and say, I'm, I'm not really satisfied with the solution I have. And I'm going to go in there, look at that fingering, look at the motions, study the grouping, study how I'm getting around that, and find a solution instead of continuing to sweep it under the rug and pretend it's not a problem. Call BS on problem passages. Number nine, play along with recordings. Uh, you know, if you have a performer you admire and uh, you have, you know, especially a slower piece where it's more possible to do this, where you want to copy the sense of rubato and the crescendos and so on, definitely do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we all study each other's work uh, and we all put our work out there for other people to hear. So there's nothing wrong with that. Play along with recordings. Finally, write something in your Zibaldone that you have discovered. I use mine for um, chord progressions, passages, and schemata that I find interesting that I want to remember. So I, I ran into one. It's actually quite well known, except I, I don't know that I'd ever memorized it. It's just this, and it's called the Perfidia. It's a type of Romanesca. that and I thought it was really cool so I learned it in another voicing all right so now that is available to me whenever I want to play that little progression I wouldn't have remembered it unless I wrote it out so number 10 write in your Zivaldone. Maybe you have ideas of how we can go about building our own musicianship. Put them in the comments if you feel like it, and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao!